Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, today I'm putting myself in the footsteps of your average holiday maker to take up two photographic challenges. So let me explain about these challenges. Tim Day contacted me, and if you haven't heard of Tim Day, where have you been? He's an extremely good photographer, but he now specializes in smartphone photography. Now Tim contacted me and challenged me to go out and shoot with just a smartphone. So that's what I'm gonna do today. And all I've got is an old iPhone 7 Plus. It's my standard bit of kit. I thought about downloading a manual camera app, but then I thought no, because the average Joe probably doesn't have a manual camera app. So I'm gonna use the native app that came with the camera to see what I can achieve. The second part of the challenge comes from a nice chap called John Hadley. John contacted me and he challenged me to go out and shoot just in JPEG and not to do any processing. And they kind of go hand in hand in some respect. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pretend I'm out and about with the family and all I've got is a smartphone. But one concession that I am gonna to make to being a photographer is that I will use the native iPhone app to do a teeny bit of post-processing. The reason being that that obviously is within reach of anybody who's got one of these devices and hopefully I can show you how to use it a little bit. Plus the photographer in me wouldn't allow me to show you any finished images without a slight enhancement here and there. Now, in order to make this challenge as realistic as possible, I've come to Lamberis in Snowdonia because it's the sort of place that you might wander about with the family on a typically dull grey day. I'm going to go for a stroll around some of the local spots where you might want to take a picture. But before I do that, I've actually found my first picture. Over my shoulder, there's some lovely birch trees in this car park and uh, you've got the Denorwig quarry sitting behind them. It's not epic and I probably wouldn't bother with it if I had my main camera and I was out and about doing proper, air quotes, photography. Um, but I'm out and about with my invisible family and all I've got is a smartphone. And people tend to point it at all sorts of things. Now, I will be using it on a tripod. The reason for that is that I need to be able to show you what I'm up to. Anyway, let's see how I get on. Right, what I'm doing with this is I've got these lovely silver birch trees. They're just starting to come into leaf, but I'm not going to be able to do anything with that aspect of them with this particular setup. What I've got in my composition is this nice row of trees and the backdrop of Dunorwig Quarry. There's a little bit of mist just running across the top. What wouldn't I give for a graduated filter on this one? But I'm just going to take an image here. I've got it set up so that I haven't got any of the car park at all in it. So my baseline is pretty much the edge of the car park over there. It means I'm losing the very bottom of this birch tree on the left hand side, but I can live with that. It's quite a nice moody shot. It really does convey the atmosphere of Lamberis. As I mentioned earlier, it's often quite grey. A couple of things worth understanding about this particular smartphone. It does have two lenses, so you've got optical options in terms of a zoom. Uh, for a standard camera equivalent, the wide angle is about 28 millimeters and the times two, of course, 56 millimeters. Um, that actually gives you quite a lot of flexibility. The main downside of this particular smartphone is more the dynamic range. But by being here on a day where the conditions are like this, uh, there's every likelihood that that probably won't be too much of a problem to work with. So here I am in a council car park, taking a few images. A um, couple of people have come in and parked up for an early morning walk and looked at me as if I'm completely mental. So I'm going to head off now and find a couple of other local spots that are worth pointing a smartphone at. Thank you. 
Well, this is turning into a really interesting challenge. I've walked up through the woods to Dolbadan Castle and walking up through the woods, you realize that when you've just got a smartphone in your hand, there's compositions all over the place that you wouldn't normally set up for. So I've already taken a series of shots walking up here. The great thing about this particular location is that it is absolutely perfect for the landscape photographer to spend a good couple of hours really enjoying themselves. You've got beautiful morning light sweeping down Nant Paris. You've got the backdrop of the mountains, the history of the castle itself. There's compositions everywhere. The other thing is at this time of year, and we're in early spring at the moment, you've got the Mayflower out on the Hawthorn, the gorse is in flower. So you've got lots of foreground interest as well. Um, I'm kind of thinking I should have brought my Olympus with me. Uh, and maybe I'll come back here with it at some point and try and do this place justice. Extremely imposing castle, by the way, the stronghold of Llewellyn Nap Yorweth, uh, sometime around the 1200s, I think. Um, and you can imagine back then, if you had a place like this, you were pretty powerful. I'm going to have a mosey around here, see what I can find, but I'm willing to bet I'm not going to be short of compositions. It's really just going to be a matter of which ones I eventually choose to show you later on. One of the questions that John had for me when he was setting me the uh, JPEG and no processing challenge was that he wasn't really clear on what's the difference between raw files and JPEGs and what Lightroom's all about. Um, now obviously an awful lot of you know exactly what that's all about so you might want to skip over the next 30 to 45 seconds because it'll be of no interest to you unless you want to hear how badly I explain it. So John, let me uh, try and clarify. A RAW file is the full set of electronic data that your camera device captures. So whatever the sensor can store, that's what a RAW file is. Completely unabridged and exactly as it was captured. A JPEG is the output from processing that particular capture. So you can either do that yourself using a program like Lightroom or Photoshop, which does exactly the same thing, or any of the other many excellent programs, some of which are completely free of charge. You can take a raw file and you can process it and to save it out as a JPEG, which is the sort of thing that you look at when you see my images, for example. They started life as a raw file and I process them. And a raw file needs things like the contrast enhancing, the saturation tweaking, the lights and darks adjusting, all the sorts of things that you would do in order to create a final output. You also might want to crop it, straighten it up and any number of other processes. Now the camera manufacturers will set an algorithm to do that for you. So if you take a picture and you output it from your camera in JPEG format, then some boffins in a Japanese laboratory who've decided what they will do to your raw file for you is what's being output. So the thing is that if you process your own raw file, you were the person that took the picture, you experience the conditions, you know what it is you're trying to achieve with the image. And so that's why people learn to process their own files, because eventually when you know what you're doing with the software, you're almost certainly going to do a better job than a boffin from a laboratory. Um, that said, if you output in JPEG, you can still get some magnificent images and hopefully I'm demonstrating that for you today, although that's for you to decide, not me. Well, I've got plenty of shots of the castle and they're fine. That's the sort of thing that the average visitor would probably point their smartphone at.
But the landscape photographer in me has spotted this particular composition and it's completely different and probably not what the average holiday maker would go, there's a shot there. Um, you might disagree, but I much prefer this one and that's why I thought I'd talk you through what I'm up to with it. So what I've got here with this is a really nice leading line of this beautiful dress slate. Um, it's one of the traditions of this part of the world that when the craftsmen were building things out of the slate, they always dressed the lines and the corners absolutely beautifully um, and it never fails to impress me. So it caught my eye. But then the eye is led across past a beautiful outcrop um, of natural rock, uh, a couple of really colourful bushes, there's yellow gorse and white mayflower, and then you look right across to the far side of the valley where there's a deep scar left as part of the De Norwick quarry workings. And this is an image that really caught my attention as being far more interesting than the castle, I'm afraid. So let me explain my thinking behind this particular composition. As you can see, I've been adjusting uh, the exact position and that's something I think that landscape photographers will spend more time doing than somebody just taking snaps with a smartphone. What I wanted to do was to get the slice of the lake over on the left hand side out of the frame. It was important to me that that wasn't included. Um, I still wanted the leading line of this stone wall to be coming in from the corner so you've got that nice diagonal lead up. You'll notice that the, the scar in the far side of the valley is on my top third. Again, classic landscape composition, but I probably will crop in a little bit from the right hand side because there's a bit too much over there that's of no interest at all. Well, now the thing about this particular challenge is that in bringing you to Lamberis, I'd had every intention of taking you to the waterfalls at Kainant Maur, to take you up to Anglesey Barracks at Dinorwick. Um, but when I arrived at Dolbadan and found I had the entire place to myself, I've actually been here about two and a half hours and I've completely run out of time. So I'm afraid you're just gonna to have to do without those other locations. And perhaps I'll come back with my Olympus and shoot those another time. So when you come to a place like this and you find you've got it to yourself, make the most of it because it doesn't happen very often. It is quite a popular location. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this slightly different uh, take on photography this morning. Um, thank you ever so much for joining me. I hope to uh, Tim, you think that I've done the challenge some justice, although of course not for me to say. John, thank you ever so much for your challenge as well and I hope I answered your questions. Um, thank you to you for tuning in and watching as always, I really appreciate it. And if you haven't done it yet, why not subscribe now and join me next time. Cheers.